Psalm 60, <clears throat> to the chief musician, upon just the year, a mitchum, which is a prayer, of David, to teach. So here's a prayer to teach. <clears throat> so not all prayers are, God, give me. When he strove with Arma Nethrun and with Amaranth Zobah, when Joab returned and smote the Eden, in the Valley of the Salt, 12,000. And that would be, I have a note here, Second Samuel 8, 3 through 13. Now, this psalm, this anger. And then, God coming in and answering. Oh God, thou hast cast us off. Rebelling against God. Going against the law. Tribulation. Thou hast scattered us. Israel scattered all over the world today. They don't go three times a year to Jerusalem what they're supposed to. They're unable to fulfill the law because there's no temple. And then when they went to Babylon, thou has been displeased. That's many a time for the nation of Israel. Time of Moses, time of Joshua, time of Samuel, time of the judges, time of the king. Time of Jesus, time of the tribulation, time of the church age. Only in the millennium is God not going to be displeased with them. He's going to give them that new heart. And yet God still loves them. And the testimony of God and the testimony of Moses, I'm not sure about Joshua, but you know, you're stiff necked people, you're rebellious. I think I think Moses chided him. He goes, Listen, I'm going to die. We're going to die in this side of the land. I'm not going in because of you. I know what you're going to do. You're going to go in there. You're going to fail God. And you're not going to listen. You're going to disobey just like you disobeyed me. Now I turn over to Joshua. And poor Joshua like. <laughs> and at the close of Joshua, he's like, you know, okay. Put away your strange God. Oh, yeah, we'll serve God. And they never put away the strange gods. And then the, this the maliciousness and the. the the horror of the book of Joseph. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Oh, turn thyself to us again. That's, they're telling God to repent and get right. And it's not a repent that God has done wrong. Forget that. It is David's repenting for the people. Say, Lord, we've done wrong and come back. And it's not God that has left. When a Christian sets forth and he's walking the path of God and a Christian has backslidden and he's gone against what God has told it's not God leaving, it's you leaving. And I have been at the point, and really most of the details I've forgotten, but I, at one point in my life, I left God and I went about my own way and come to find out when I made that long journey back, and I came back where God and I left, where I left God. I was in the same place where God was when I left. I just had a lot more baggage and a lot more sin. It's not God leaving, it's us leaving God. And where you leave in your Christian walk, and I know this is true, God stopped right there. Okay, go ahead. I'll wait for you. And you don't believe me, what is the story of, of the prodigal son? Did the father go into the pigsty? Absolutely not. Who went in the pigsty? The son. Where was the father? He stayed home. And it was the boy that came back, and it was the father that went to the boy when the boy is coming home repenting. And when the boy came back in his right mind and repented, he found the father at the same place where he left the father at home. Like I said, when I had a serious backslidden in my life, I came back and I found my, I, I, like I said, I really, I forgot all the details. But there was a point in my time I came back to the Lord and said, you know what? And it's not deja vu, it's, God, you stayed right there and you waited for me to come back. Thou has made the earth to tremble, second advent. There is massive earthquake coming. 
in the future. And I heard someone say, well, you know, in the church days, there's no prophets. Yes, there are. I'm a prophet. Now, I don't call tea leaves. I don't read dice. I don't read bumps on the head. I don't use a crystal ball. I use the King James 1611 Bible, and I can tell you your future. I'm a prophet. And if you will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you die, you're going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's prophecy, according to the scripture. And the book of Revelation tells us, and, and Jesus tells us, that in the tribulation period, there is going to be earthquakes. And when we get closer and closer to the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ, the entire earth is going to be rechanged by a massive earthquake that is going to divide the city. And the Bible says that when Jesus comes and lands on the Mount of Olives, he's going to split that valley into a valley. That's going to be a massive earthquake. Thou hast broken it. Thou hast broken it. Heal the ble breaches thereof. That would be the city or the earth. Probably most likely the main focus is at Jerusalem where God said, I'll put my name. Jerusalem will be in a mess. Jerusalem, I mean, everybody said, let's go to the holy city. That holy city is a vile and wicked city. The book of Revelation said it's described as Egypt. And that holy city of Jerusalem is going to turn it into a sewer pit when the Antichrist and the devil and the false prophet have made it their capital. And when he will be sitting in the most holy place and say, hi, here I am. The abomination of desolation in the most holy place in Jerusalem where the temple will be. Sewage. Sour. Garbage of the devil. Heal the breach of for it shaken. An earthquake. Thou hast showed thy people, Israel, not America, not the church. There's no church yet. There's no America. David's writing it. David is king. Joab is his military leader. And it's possibly they knew about this this country. I mean, the Vikings were here. They tried to make it. Christopher Columbus had no idea. They knew America was here. The Vikings did. The Russians knew. And they came over through Alaska. Thou hast showed thy people Israel hard thing. What hard thing? Daniel. And Daniel hasn't even been born yet. Jeremiah. Jeremiah hasn't even been born yet. What's David talking about when, when we see prophecies we read in the Bible we know about? He's talking about the law. There's a, there's a particular passage, again, Deuteronomy, I think it's Deuteronomy. He says, listen, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to punish you seven, seven more times for your sin. And he leaves off the list. He says, you still will not listen to me. I'm going to punish you seven more times for you. And then he goes, I'm going to punish you seven more times for your sin. That's a hard thing. That if we rebel against God, we are going to get tribulation. We're going to get curses. And David's like, we're here. Jeremiah says, you're coming to it. Ezekiel says, we're here. Daniel said, we lived through it. Jesus said, it's coming. Revelation says, it's coming. Thou has made us, Israel, to drink the wine of, of astonishment. Babylon, the captivity of Babylon, where they tried to take the Hebrew children and make them Babylonian. The wine of astonishment when, when Rome came over and took over Israel. They're in the wine of astonishment today that that is not their land. And they say, well, you know, Israel was declared that land. And yet they keep changing the borders to please the enemy. Right now, there could be, and the news is not going to report it. But right now, when you hear from missionaries that are in that area, they're firing rockets over into Israel, right, probably right now. 
You got kids walking in Israel, going to school with AK-7 attached to their book bag on math, Hebrew, English, whatever they're going to learn. You could be sitting at a little coffee shop in, in any city in Israel, sipping a cup of coffee with, with your wife, your spouse, or whoever, and then have a missile come or a bomb come land within feet of you. A great nation under Jehovah. Why are we so? Because you sinned against Jehovah. That happened during uh, Exodus. That happened during Moses. That happened during the Judges. That happened during Joshua. It's happening during David. It's happening. Going to happen under Daniel, under Jeremiah, under Jesus. In the tribulation, in the church age. That Jew is astonished. And when you read Isaiah 53, when we say that that is the Lord Jesus Christ, we know it is. If you ask a Jew who is in with, with the scriptures of the Holy Scriptures, and you say, well, decipher me Isaiah 53. And he will tell you that is about the, the, the people of Israel. And the, one, it's the ones who have beaten that servant Israel is the Gentiles. That's what they will tell you, Jesus. They'll say, it's us, the nation of Israel, and you dead dog Gentiles are doing it to us. They're astonished. They were astonished with Jesus. No man taught had authority of the scriptures like the scribes. They were amazed that this man came and healed and raised dead people. That we're going to kill Lazarus because people are turning to Jesus and showing up to see this dead man sitting down and having a meal. How dare this guy do miracles on a Sabbath day? What did Jesus violate on the Sabbath day? You couldn't pick up sticks. You couldn't do this. You, you couldn't go on a journey. What work did Jesus do that he actually violated the Sabbath? No, he just spoke. You tell me you can't speak <coughs> on the Sabbath? Jesus said, listen, on the Sabbath, if it's the eighth day for male circumcision, don't you do the circumcision? Do you not put the bread out on the Sabbath? Do you not offer the lamb in the morning and the lamb at the evening on the Sabbath? If you read Jesus and every time he heals somebody, one time he made clay, okay, Another time he spit in the guy, his hands or the guy's, you, know, you can't really tell how that's read. Other time he says, all right, take up your bed and walk. Stretch forth your hand. Arise. That's not do it. And they're all astonished. Well, Jesus, should we pay taxes? And then he left them with an answer. Like, Ugh. We don't dare ask him no more questions. Thou hast given a banner, a flag, to them that fear thee. And what's that banner? It's the Stars and Stripes of America. It is not. It's America's name. Oh, that's shut up. Betsy Ross. By the way, that's a lie. The Betsy Ross thing is all a lie. So, on you. And that banner is, I'll show you that banner. Revelation. Oh, I can't. Is it 19? I'm sorry, just lost the chapter. I think it's 19 now. I can't think. If I'm loud, forgive me. I hear. Do pray for my ear. I'll show you that banner. It's in the Bible. Revelation 19, verse 16. And he has on his vest his clothing. And on his thigh, the, the big part of your leg. A name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's the flag. There's the banner. Well, who's that? That's our king. Didn't we read something about King of the Jews, King of the... Yeah, here he comes. That it may, it, the banner, may be displayed... You know what America does? They take that banner of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Word of God, John, and they replace it with the stars and stripes. You worship the flag, and I don't care how you feel about me. 
You can't let the flag touch the ground. You can't burn the flag. Uh, you can't fly the flag at night unless you have a light on it. And you got to fold it a certain way. And you can't do this with the flag. And just take the Bible, throw it in the back seat of the car. Just stick the Bible in the bookshelf and never open it again. Don't even bring a Bible to, to a Bible-believing church. Let the Bible just be, you know, who cares? I have more honor in the Word of God, the King James Bible, than I do the American flag. Because there will be no American flag in New Jerusalem. But there will be the Word, Jesus Christ. If you don't like that, that's tough. You need to repent or you're going to face wood, hay, or stubble. That flag is an idol and idolatry to many. You do not treat the Bible as well and as reverent as that flag is to be. You can't throw the, bat, the flag in the garbage. You can't. It's a violation. you got to call one of these groups and they'll come and they have a ceremony to get rid of the flag. I have taken Bibles and I've thrown them in the garbage. King James Bible, you know, they, they got wrecked and it's just old and all that. I got two. I got two Schofield Bibles. One goes to my my, my children. The other one goes to my children. I don't have to call Pastor. Hi. Yeah. I, you know, I got a King James Bible. It, it's 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 seen its best days. It's old. Can you come over here and pick it up so we can have the ceremony? No, you don't do that. But for a flag. There are rules that you can find out about the American flag online. And it, look up Google. What must I do to get rid of a Bible? <laughs> you don't like it, that stuff. You can turn me off and you can just go about rebelling against God. I don't care. I'm serving God. I love the Lord. I'm a Jeremiah to America. I tell you. And I am not a Jehovah Witness. Don't you dare call me a Jehovah Witness. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus is the banner, the flag. I lost people. I don't care. I'm going to serve the Lord. Be displayed because of the truth. <laughs> the truth. Yeah, you see America standing for the truth. You can't even get the offices of the government to agree. They lie to you. Every year they lie to you when you have to vote for them in office. They're liars. Republican, Democrats, Independent, whatever office they are. They're liars. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus never sinned. He is God. He is the Word. Let's wave Him. I like I like that hymn we sing. You know, wave the banner back to, to God. And you wave your Bible. That thy O Sheila. Remember, that's a musical rest in a prayer, in a song. Also, there would be a references to the Second Advent again. That thy beloved, God's beloved. Gee, I wonder who that is. This is Jesus, my only beloved, O begotten Son. Fear ye him, listen to him. May be delivered. All right, so that thy beloved may be delivered. That beloved would be the people. Verse 3. They are beloved of God. They are the apple of God. So correctly dividing the Bible, the beloved here is not Jesus. It's the nation of Israel. All right, save. Here we go. Ready? Here comes Jesus with thy right hand. Who is seated at the right hand of the Father today? Jesus. Who's going to save the nation of Israel? Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. I had a pastor one time tell me, he goes, I'm not having you teach no more. I said, why not? Because the people like you. I said, whoa. Uh, where is it? Uh, chapter 7, verse 56. Stephen. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man, Jesus, standing at the right hand of God. 
At that moment, if Israel would have listened to Stephen, it would have been the rapture of Israel. But they rejected the message. Who's going to save the nation of Israel? The one on the right hand. Jesus Christ. And David says, and hear me, David. David is sure a prophet. God has spoken in his holiness. So we call it the Holy Bible. The Holy Book. That's what Bible means. God said, I will rejoice. What's the will of God? God rejoices. I will divide Shechem. Now the next names of these places are all in the realm of David and his kingdom. I'm going to I'm going to part, I'm going to separate Shechem and meet, that means measure out the valley of Sukkot. We are within and without the Jordan River boundary. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is also the strength of my head. And Ephraim and Manasseh are the two children of Joseph. Judah is my lawgiver, and run that back to Genesis 49.10. The blessing of Judah by Jacob. Moab is my watch pot. That's a vessel to clean what goes in dirty comes out clean. That's what a pot, watch pot is. Moab it's where David's great-great-grandmother comes from. Ruth. Over Edom. That's the brother of Jacob, Esau. Who I cast out my shoe. Now, other places it says sandal. God said, did not say sandals because sandals are in the Bible. He says shoe. What's that mean? I don't know. See, I'm honest. Philistia, that's Philistines. Triumph thou because of me, God. And this is repeated on Psalms 108, verse 9. <coughs> so Lord willing, when we get to Psalms 108, we're going to see this again. A verily, verily. I don't understand all the Bible. Who will, and that was the holy word of God, the holiness, verse 6, what we just read. Who will bring me, God, into a strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Jesus Christ is going to come up that king's highway and he goes through the land of Moab and Edom and crosses the Jordan River where Joshua crosses over to what strong city? Jerusalem. And I'm not going to say that's the root of the... Of the <clears throat> of the of Jesus Christ because Ephraim is on the half of Ephraim is or no half of Manasseh is on the wrong side of the Jordan and half is on the other side of the Jordan. Philistines, Philistines are way over on the sea coast. So again, these are territories in the kingdom of David for sure. Will not thou go, O oh God? So God is going to bring them into the strong city. Second advent. Which has that which has cast us off. Tribulation. God's cast them off Jacob's trouble. And he's going to bring them in into the promised land. And it's Revelation 19. It is the word of God. It is Jesus Christ says, Oh God. Wilt not thou, O God, which hath cast us off, and thou, O God, which didst not go out with our army, give us help, there's that, there's that word again, from trouble. That's a great word of David. And that's what David had a lot of trouble. That's what Israel's going to have a lot of trouble in Jacob's trouble. For vain is the help of man. And yet there'll be there'll be sheep nations that will help the Jews and will get into the millennium for their helping. 
Through God, we shall do that. Yeah, Valentine's Day. Well, who's coming in to get the Jew and bring him into the land? Jesus. Who is Jesus? That's God. Throw the Jehovah Witnesses in the garbage. We shall do valiantly, for he is that shall tread down our enemy. Okay, that's interesting. He's going to tread down our enemy. So let's go back to Revelation before we close. I think it's 19. Nineteen. Oh, where do I want to start? Eleven. And I saw heavens open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Capital letters. In righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And his clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. John tells us that's Jesus. And the armies which he were in heaven followed him, that's us, upon white horses clothed in fine linen and clean. And out of his mouth goes forth a sharp sword. And with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of, of iron. He shall tread the winepress of the fierce, fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. We already read 16. That's Jesus Christ coming back, wiping the, the enemy out. And He also, a moment here. This one, I'm going to go quick look here. I got my Bible so marked where I don't see it. Um, oh, here's another place here Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged, uh -oh, that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to the fear thy name, small and great, and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth. Again, that's the enemies of Israel. God will conquer over them through Jesus Christ. God, Jesus Christ, will get victory, and Israel will be in victor in the end. 